All right, welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be going through an unboxing of the Voron 0.2 kit from LDO. This is the Voron 0.2 S1 kit, to be specific. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you may have seen some other kits uh, that I've unboxed and, and shown. My goal here with all these different builds and, and Voron kits that I'm looking at is to help educate you and give you some insight into what's available on the market. Pricing-wise, these kits are going to run you anywhere from 600 to 650 and maybe even north of that. This is a full complete kit, but there are going to be a few things that it may not include, and that, that's going to be things like the Raspberry Pi. As of this video, those are still hard to find, unfortunately, but there are a lot of alternatives coming to market. But that is a crucial component you're going to have to figure out. But beyond that, you will need to get some 3D printed parts on your own. For the most part, everything that you need is going to be in this kit, and I'll be going through that during the unboxing, as well as the review, and talk about some of my experiences. And there are numerous vendors that are currently selling these kits they're as distributors and they're also some of them may be adding some additional components which will probably increase the price a little bit but you may also get a few additional components along with that. Without further ado I'm going to go ahead and dig in and unbox the kit. Go ahead and start by cutting the straps. The box is in good shape. Right, here we go. And there's a box inside a box. Cool. Now, the, now we get to the goodies. And first up, we've got this LDO Voron 0102 motor kit. You can see that we've got the 36STH20, which is the pancake driver motor. We've also got these two XY motors. And we've got the Z motor, so they packed them all right in here. And then we've also got the anti-backlash knot with spring. We've got some pins to crimp the motors with. If I'm not sure why that's included, but maybe if these are wrong or bad, but it looks like they're all pre-crimped, which is nice, including the Z. We've got the frame kit. I went with the, the gray here that you can see. And these are always nice and packed. So there's what the extrusion looks like. I themed this after my Trident, but I wanted to have the same color scheme. I really like it. This is the box for the rails, the linear rail kit. One thing that you notice here is that they're stainless steel rails, and we've also got a, so we've got standard LDO rails, and then we've also got a high wind rail. And the high wind rails are really nice, especially because these will have a little bit more of a preload, so there will be no wobble on the rail, which I think is a really nice feature. It's nice that they include that. The high wind's going to be this uh, red and green one here, and the rest of these are the stainless LDO. We've also got these inserts, and this is how you're going to secure the rail to the extrusion. So this will slide into the extrusion, and then your rail will sit on top. And this is a nice feature. This means you don't have to use, a lot of times you'll use these, which I went ahead and printed anyway, but you won't need to use these uh, rail nut carriers. This here is what you're going to use it's a raceway or racetrack that you're going to put your wiring through. And there's plenty of it here. You can cut it and really just put it however you want. But normally it goes in the middle, down the center. We've got a cable kit here. Let's see what's in here. All right, this is labeled. Yeah, the sleeve is going to be used to wire your uh, umbilical. And this is going to be your switch. And it's already pre-terminated. So you can see it's got these crimps, crimps on here, JSTXH. And then you're just going to fit that over it. The reason that it's not put on is because you have to run that through a cable chain. Otherwise, they would have just put it on for you. And having these wires pre-crimped really does save a lot of time in the build. You can see that they're also labeled. This is your AC power cable here, which is going to go from your... This is going to go to your power supply, and this end is going to go to your inlet, your AC inlet. And this looks like it's the, yeah, this is going to be what powers your MCU or your PCB. So this will go to the power supply end. This will go to your 24-volt uh, in on your SKR Pico. And then you've got your bed heater. This is going to power what, be what powers the bed. And then you've also got your bed thermistor. And next up, I've got this Kirigami bed. I've actually installed one of these before. Within here, you're gonna have the fasteners that you need. 
You're also going to have some electrical components. You can see here on this label. Right, this is a Wago, and this is how you're gonna be splicing your connections together. This is the PCB that you put in the front of the bed, and this is going to be what shines your NeoPixel light, which is a really cool feature. And this is your NeoPixel cable connector. And you can see that these connections are only crimped on one side. This is gonna plug into the PCB. This is gonna be routed through the cable chain, which is why the connector's not on there. And there's also another little piece here. So here's the connector that goes on here. Or for the heated bed connection, you're gonna have plus and minus going through here. One end's gonna come from the power supply and the other end's gonna go to the bed. And then this is your, kind of your junction PCB for the thermistor. So one end is gonna come from the MCU through the cable chain, the other end's gonna go to the bed as well. And this is the Kirigami bed itself. You might have, you might have to bend this a little to make sure that it's perfectly straight. Yeah, and this, the nice thing about this too is it's, it's the same color as the frame. The Kirigami bed really is a popular option over the stock bed. I prefer it because your bed's not gonna sag in the front at all. Um, it really does stiffen things up a bit. The stock bed's fine too, but we're starting to see these becoming a really popular option on these kits. This is gonna be our power supply. And this is a Morrison, Morrison power supply. It's a 200 watt power supply, which is plenty. I actually have this power supply on another Voron Zero Two, and it works great. The Meanwhile one that normally that used to come with these kits is a little bit smaller, so this has got more headroom in it. Here we have the fasteners, tools, and miscellaneous. This is going to be your VHB tape, which you use for some of the panel mounting, um, particularly the doors, and you also are going to need it to mount the DIN clips on the back of the printer. Got a little bag of tools here. I really like this soldering iron insert heat insert tip and we've also got some allen keys there's a drill bit a couple hex wrenches plenty of tools here you can get a better view that way this is pretty much all you're going to need i prefer using uh, different drivers though like this style of driver i find that a little more comfortable to work with but these are fine and especially if you're a new builder and might not have the tools these can really come in handy okay, we've got some neodymium magnets these are going to be used for installing the door handle that you're going to open and close and latch these are the feet for the printer we've got some i won't go through all these but we've got a bag of fasteners so plenty of fasteners here all these are labeled and this is a really nice extra this is the pico bilical pcb kit based off the umbilical and in here we've got the fasteners and we've also got some cables and then basically what the pico umbilical is going to give you is the ability to have your connections all at your tool head and then they're going to carry down with a separate connector that goes to your main board so that way if you want to change out a fan or change out different components it's a lot easier to do because you can work on it without having to take the back panel off. And you'll also note on the box itself that there are links and you can go to the LDO website and learn all about these mods. There's also a GitHub repo that you can check out. And there are gonna be some special printed parts that you will need in order to install this. So here we've got the Pico Bilical tool head PCB, the frame PCB, and the pie hat. So this appears to be the pie hat, which that's gonna allow you to, uh, to power things. This is the tool head PCB. This PCB will go behind your tool head and you're going to connect your, the connector, which basically carries all of these connections to the MCU. And on here, you've got your thermistor, your X end stop, your hot end fan, your part cooling fan. This is gonna be your heater. And then you've also got the uh, motor connector. So you're gonna have two part cooling fans connecting and your thermistor and your, part, and your hot end fan. You're not gonna need an XN stop, but it is nice that it's in there. So you might be able to run something different there if you need to. And rounding out the Pico Bilical kit, we have this guy here, which is the Pico Bilical itself. You can see on the back, we've got the connector. And then we've also got a pinout that's listed here. And on here, you've got pretty much all your connections that we just covered. They're also going to connect to the MCU. And also in the bag was this little 7A fuse. That's kind of nice that they give you a spare. 
here's the V0 display. It's pretty self-explanatory. And this is exciting to me. It's my very first Revo. I've been wanting to try one of these for a while. I was waiting for the, the hardened nozzles to come out, which I'll have to get one of. So in here you've got pretty much everything you need for your Revo. And this is cool. It's actually the, the same color as my extrusion, so it's gray. And we've also got the heater core here. And we've got a couple nozzles. We've got the tool head in motion here. Here's some genuine Bontech gears. This is really nice. I know a lot of cheaper kits are gonna have clone gears, and clone gears are never as good as the real thing, so I always like to, to use these real genuine gears. So these genuine parts are one of the things that really set the LDO kit apart from the competition, and while you're paying a little bit more. These are nice, so these set screws here that you're gonna be using on your motors with your pulleys, these, are already, these already have Loctite on them, or thread, thread lockers, so you don't need to apply your own. There's the pulleys. They're very nice quality. So you can, we've got the LDO branded thumb screw assembly. Plenty of bearings. These are all high quality F623 2RS bearings. Some more screws, some more bearings, some MR85 bearings. And we've got a nice cap tube, Teflon tubing it looks like. And this is what you're gonna use in between your hot end and the uh, extruder. And last is a genuine Gates belt, 2GT six millimeter. These are really nice quality belts. And next up we've got the build plate and parts. There's a cable chain here. This is gonna be used for the Z. Plenty of links in here. This is gonna be your bed thermistor. We've also got some bed springs. We've got our textured plate here. And we've this is double-sided, so one side is textured, one side is smooth PEI. You're gonna need to remove that film before you use it. There's a magnetic sheet here, 3M, also genuine. And then this is, uh, this is probably a little different. So this is a special plate. This plate is gonna get to the true temperature that you set it to. You're gonna be screwing in your thermistor right in here. And you can see, you can kind of see the, just the design of this is really interesting. And it goes pretty much ed, almost edge to edge. And keeping on going, we've got the electronics and wirings, as well as a PTFE tube, that's nice. Four by three millimeter. The three millimeter is the inner diameter. You can see that there's plenty of room in there and that's really what you want. Got, also got an AC inlet, high quality. And this is a nice thick gauge, which is what you want to see on these and some fans. So these fans are LDO Motors branded, which is interesting. They used to be GDS time, at least the last LDO kit I had. It'll be interesting to see how these fans compare. And these are gonna be the part blower fans. And then we've got a couple of 3010 DC fans. And these are also LDO Motors branded. This one is gonna be for the hot end and the other one is gonna be for the case. And, oh wow, there's a nice little surprise in here. A Raspberry Pi 02W. So you can use this if you want, and and it includes a USB board. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. So Raspberry Pis are really hard to find. It's nice that they include this. I'm not sure that all kits will include this, but this is a nice surprise in this kit. So here's the Pi Zero 2W itself. These are really about equivalent to a Pi 3, from my understanding. It's definitely enough to keep up. And here is the USB hub. So this basically gives you the same number of USB ports that you're going to have on a normal Raspberry Pi full size. And one of my favorite boards here is the SKR Pico. I've used this on several builds. I think it's a great board. We've got some zip ties, plenty of those. Print a steppy. So be sure to check that out and show your support for LDO. And look at that, there's a 32 gigabyte card and that's what we're going to use for the Pi Zero 2W and also a heat sink for the Raspberry Pi. I'm glad they got away from the GDS time fans. Uh, I think there's only room for improvement, so I'm looking forward to testing these fans out. Just a regular power cord, nothing too crazy here. And we also have the panels and a docu some documents. Let me look at the documents first and then we'll look at the panels. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it's something. Wow, look at that. It's a gold ruler. 
laser engraved. That is really cool. So this is going to come in real handy when you're doing your extrusions and double checking the length. And it's even got boron, LD of boron on it. So that, that's pretty slick. Pretty much all of the parts that are included, it lists it out. And there's also a LDO kit serial number here that you've got if you want to keep track of that. Double sided. And then we've got some pretty snazzy stickers and a little bit of a flyer and a calendar. Nice. And I'll just mention on this documentation here, it's also got some helpful information. And they recommend that you check out the latest assembly manual and they've got the link for it. They ask you to go check out the Voron. I lurk around there quite a bit. And then also look at the LDO documentation specifically, and then follow the setup guide once you get done. So this is everything you need to know right here. It's nice that they include that information. And I'd like to take a look at these panels just to see what they're like. Acrylic clear black. And then all of the sides are gonna be clear as well. You'll see these a little better when you see my review video. As you can see, there is an awful lot in that kit, and I am very excited. A lot of the components are, that are in there, you can tell LDO has been doing this for a while. They've really gotten these kits down to a science, and everything in there is a high-quality component. It was very well packed. And I opted to go for Fusion Filaments, Thorium Silver, as well as the Dwarf Red. I'm still printing the parts, so they're not all here yet, but you can kind of get an idea of the direction I'm taking with it. I'm pretty happy with these parts. I decided to print them myself just because I've got a few rolls of this stuff laying around. I think so far the print quality is pretty good. I'm printing them on a Voron 2.4 and a Trident. If you don't have print, your own printed parts, I highly recommend you look at Boxy Prints, now known as Provoked 3D or Provoked. Uh, he's done a lot of my builds in the past. And if, if you don't want to go that route, there's also the Voron PIF program. I've got another video that I'll link in the description on how to do that. And please stay tuned. I will be doing a, a build on this, and as soon as I get the build done, I'll put it through a few paces, a few prints, and then I will be doing a follow-up review. So thanks again for watching Greg's Maker Corner, and I hope you enjoy this series.